All right, quiet on the set. All right, gotcha. This weekend, SEC football promo. <laughs> Take two. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's your guy, Mr. Fingers, coming to you live from Zagnev Central. Hey, and I'm Colin P., a brother from another. What it is, showbiz? I will tell you what it is, showbiz. You guys, welcome to this week's edition of This Week in SEC Football. But before we get started, do us a little favor. If you're watching us on the YouTube, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button if you have not done so already. We appreciate you much. And if you want to be a contributor to the show, a little something, something to help the cause, right down there in the bottom, in the lower third, in the crawl, rolling across your screen is the address for our Patreon page. We got some great perks for those of you that are contributors and regular viewers of the show because we appreciate you so very, very much. So, Colin, my man, I think it's time to get this show started. What you say? My man, let's lay the hammer down. Oh, you know we going to do something before two something. Club Shay Shay coming right at you right after this. <laughs> oh, hello, hello, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls. What Beba does, what Beba do. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Freestyle. It's Mr. F I N G A to the Z. Rocking on the microphone with Kyle and P from the DMV. And he is me, and we are three talking about the SEC. Word. Hey, what's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? <laughs> I had to drop, had to put a little something, something on the end. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday. Welcome to this week's edition of This Week in SEC Football. I am your guy coming to you from Zagnev Central. You heard me. M-I-S-T-A-F-I-N-G-A to the Z. Now, baby, tell me what you want to do with me <laughs> right here from the OKC with that guy right over there, the brother from another, the sexy mother Hubbard, the ace of bass in the place, in your face. I'm very happy to be here. It is my favorite part of the game. I have just been placed in charge of garbage. <laughs> Do you have anything that requires disposal? That is Colin P. <laughs> <laughs> from the DMV in the SEC. My God, that intro just keeps getting longer and longer. After a while, it's going to be a 30 minute intro. How you doing, bro? <laughs> oh, man, I'm doing good. Good to see the end of the week here. But uh, yeah, man, like I was just telling you uh, before, my parents just came up here. They drove, they, uh, drove up from Georgia. They just uh, showed up this evening, or this afternoon to make their stop off for hang out with us for a weekend and then they're they're out to fly into the uh big country of germany they're going out to visit some uh, family over in uh, germany and uh, so they'll be gone for two weeks so i'm here to car sit uh for them <laughs> so so yeah man i'm doing good man how about you you doing all right bro you heard what i said it's friday i don't have to go mm -hmm. back to work till monday i'm chilling had a good productive week at work slept good all week tried to eat halfway good didn't really get a whole lot of exercise in, but I tried to eat halfway good. Uh, I'm probably back down to a count of three on the pull-up bar because I hadn't done no pull-ups in a couple weeks. But you know how things go. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling real good, man. I'm feeling real good. Looking forward to uh, looking forward to trying to relax this weekend if I can. Right. So I you, know that. That go. you know how that goes. You know how that goes. You know how that go. I'm going to eat me a little something after the show is over. I might mess around and order something and have the missus bring it in here while we got the show. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't really eat nothing today. I didn't really eat nothing today. So let's go ahead and get right on into it, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be a brief show tonight. Uh SEC games we got going on this week. Uh, we got Kent State coming to Sanford Stadium to play the dogs. Um, the odds for Kent State are not good. No. We we kind of have an idea how this thing is gonna go. Uh, right now, I got the odds pulling up. Uh, they are favored. The dogs are by 
99% that uh, Georgia will win. There is no line. Uh, actually, I take that back. They got Georgia favored by 45 points in this one. Yeah. Uh, I think it should be – well, it's not going to be painless for Kent State, but the thing for me that I'm looking for, I want the guys to come out and be crisp. And uh, to be crisp, you know, you don't want to get sloppy against a team that you know that you can beat. <laughs> And I want to see him come out and not get any injuries. And I would like to see the running back, the running game open up some more in this game. If there's never an opportunity to really open up the running game and see what we got is now. Because we our bread and butter has been the receiving core. So what you got on that, sir? Yeah, no, no, yeah, I would agree. I mean, this is another one of those games where we need to uh, kind of just hone in on what our uh, what our weaknesses are and, and kind of try to, you know, uh, play the, the play to those. To get those weaknesses better, and uh, you know, try to get uh, to correct the mistakes that we've been making uh, against uh, Kansas State. But uh, you know, I would like to say that you know the coach actually had been uh, really, really heavy and high on uh, Georgia uh, accolades, saying how good Georgia is, this, that, and the other. And then you know, Kirby, true to form, you know, went back, you know, back at him, and said, you know, look, man, you guys are great too. This is a great football team, which it is. I mean, if you look at their stats and everything and who they play, you know, Kansas State's no slouch in their conference. You know, I mean, in in their uh, side of the house. Um, but like I said, they, they, they could, uh, you know, they could expose some of our weaknesses, you know, that, that would be, you know, I would like to see that. That way we know, you know, we can, uh, kind of see those kinds of things and correct them, you know, but, uh, well, I don't want to see any, I don't want to see any weaknesses myself, but I mean, you know, I, no, would I, like to think, I would like to think at this point that, 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 I mean, well, you know, every team has got some weaknesses somewhere, uh, yeah. you know, last year, the defense was so dominant. It was really hard to, I mean, the defense was so dominant that, the offense really had it easy. So people were just starting to look for stuff like, oh, well, Stetson should have thrown that ball away instead of throwing it in the ground because oh, yeah. it would have been a fall. It was almost a fumble. But yeah. uh, game is on at 12 p. It's a 12 p.m. kickoff Eastern time. will be on ESPN Plus or the SEC Network if you have it. If you don't have either of those, you can log in. Uh, if you have an ESPN Plus account, you can log in on your laptop, your tablet, your phone, Enter in your login information for your uh, cable provider, your cable service provider, and you can watch it there. Um, if you don't, then I suggest you get somewhere where they got the game. Good luck to the boys tomorrow. Go dogs. Uh, let's see. Next up on the slate, we got the Tigers of Missouri. Travel to Auburn to take on the Tigers, a much belaggered program. Uh, we just, the news broke yesterday. Zach Calzada is out uh, for the remainder of the season with the shoulder injury. Same shoulder he injured before. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's out for the remainder of the season. And TJ Finley is injured. I think he's probably going to be a game time decision. So, I mean, everything, everything for this game, everything falls up, falls on the backup quarterback. Yep. And, this is a must-win game for Brian Harson. This is also a must-win game for Auburn. Um, Auburn is two and one, and this is going to kind of be the make or break. I think this is going to be the make or break for the season. This is going to be the pivotal game where losing this game could mean the you know the rest of the season going in the toilet. They're still yeah. favored by seven points, despite that. Right. You know, um, but Brady Cook, you know, Brady Cook can uh, light up the scoreboard. He's their leading rusher. He's their leading passer. Uh, they've got uh, uh, Lovett is their leading receiver, 274. So, you know, I mean, what do you what do you got, man? I, I don't I don't know. I think Auburn manages that. I'm going to go with the odds makers. I think they eat this one out. And I've I keep putting the, the stat way. So give me what you got while I look up what we've got for Auburn. Yeah, I think Auburn, Auburn, this is a must win, not only because it's a must win, I think just because it's at home. And I think uh, I I honestly don't think they're going to blow out Missouri by any stretch. But, I mean, I think they are going to pull it out. Uh, they will win the game out. I mean, maybe cover, maybe be a 10-point game, uh, in my opinion. Uh, that all depends. Honestly, you know, you said uh, T.J. Finley being uh, injured. So, I mean, it all depends on if he's good to go or, you know, how hobbled he is or, you know, how affected he is by the injury he has. Um, but I think, you know, all things considered, you know, it being a, a must win and it being at home, uh, I think, uh, you know, they'll they pull it out. 
Uh, yeah, especially after getting embarrassed at home last week by Penn State. Yeah. Uh, there are some rumors swirling already. You know, the buzzers, the rumors are uh, swirling around and the buzzers are circling. And if they lose this game this Saturday, then Harson will be fired. Oh, that's so, it. Huh? Yeah, that's th- those are the rumors that are circulating. Okay. And generally, when you hear those rumors circulating, then that means that it's either it's either it's coming or it's not far off in the distance. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in other SEC action, moving on to the next game. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going through these pretty quick. We're not going to keep you long tonight. We're just going to hit you hot and fast and keep it moving. Uh, kind of like uh, kind of like the drive through line at Chick-fil-A. Get you what you need in five <laughs> minutes or less. Tell you my pleasure and give you a whole bag full of sauce to take you home with. Uh, yeah. So the Gators traveling to Nayland Stadium to take on the Volunteers of Tennessee. That is a 3.30 kickoff on CBS. If I asked you, Colin, when the last time was that the Volunteers beat the Gators, would you be able to tell me? Uh, was or, how many, or how many times they've won against the Gators in the last 17 years? Last 17 years? Uh, I think it's been, I mean, it's, it's been a while, I believe. I would say how many times they've won in the last 17 years? Two? Mm-hmm. You would be off by one. The Gators have beaten, <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent, have beaten the Tennessee Volunteers. All but once since 2005. The Tennessee oh, wow. Volunteers are very heavily favored. They're three and oh, they're looking really good. They got Hendon Hooker underneath quarterback. The boy is playing lights out ball. Uh, they can, where you got right leading this pack with 231 points, uh, 231 points, oh, 231 yards rushing so far. Uh, Tennessee is scoring. 52 points a game. Florida is doing is getting 25. They're averaging over 500 yards a game. I think this is a game that Tennessee is going to come in and dominate. They're going to shake that monkey off their back. Yeah, and I, I'd agree with that. Um, and plus, you got Richardson. Now. Yeah, you, he's he's struggling. You know, what I'm saying they just he's got to find his game. And I don't know if it's going to be this game with uh, <clears throat> or this you know game against Tennessee because I mean they like you said they're balling out right now. Um, I just don't think Florida's got it this year. I just yeah, I'm with you. So you think Florida's going? Florida's going to regress a little bit into uh, into Mullinville? I do believe so. I mean, like you're looking at it, you know, yards allowed for Florida. I mean, they they're allowing 373 yards, <laughs> you know, and uh, and but, and Texas is is racking up almost 200 yards more than that per game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I I don't see Florida having the weapons. I don't know necessarily about the discipline, but I don't see them having the weapons. And honestly. Honestly, I don't see them having the the suck up a gutness. I don't. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to say, but that's the that's that's the phrase that I'm going to use. You know, we <laughs> talk about sucking up a gut. I don't yeah. think they have it in them. I think if Tennessee takes off and goes running, I, I think it's a wrap. That's yeah. That's just I mean, what I got. The, I mean, look at the look at the rushing yards they allowed. I mean, almost 200 yards they really allow rushing, and 178 yards passing. You know, Florida has, and uh, you know. But at the same point, Tennessee's allowed 261 uh, passing yards. So I mean, I don't know, but I just I still think Tennessee's going to whip them pretty handily, and, and plus being in Knoxville. So I mean, you know, it's going to be it's in uh, Knoxville. So uh, that's another another uh, thing that's going to not be in Florida's <laughs> in Florida's advantage. So yeah, um, I you know what I I'm I'm with you 100 percent on this. I I think that uh, I think that Tennessee finally shakes the monkey off their back. I don't know I don't know that it means that the series will start to even out, but Josh Heupel's got a good thing building at Tennessee. I do believe. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. We'll see if this you know this could be be the beginning of the turn of the series again. That's a 3:30 Eastern PM kickoff time on CBS. Our next game that we got coming up. This one I have, uh, excuse me. This one I have as my as my week four upset alert of the week. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this one right here. Mm-hmm. This game is my week four upset alert of the week. Upset alert. Upset alert. Upset alert. Upset alert. 
Boop. Arkansas travels to College Station to take on Texas A&M. Number 10, Arkansas. Number 23, Texas A&M. Actually, I'm not going to call it an upset. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just call it. I think that this is going to be a rough one for Jimbo and the boys. Even though Arkansas is not favored in this game, they're not Mm -hmm. favored. It's only a two-point favorite. Right. You know, they're only a two point favorite. And yep. like I said, the, like I said last week, if you hold your team, if you hold your opponent to nine points, you should beat them by more than eight. They aren't, you know, AM is not clicking on all cylinders offensively. Right. They can't, you know, they're having a hard time moving the ball. They're averaging 20.7 points a game. You can't do that. And you're talking about an Arkansas team that's running up, uh, running up almost 40 a game in three yep. in the last three weeks. So for yeah. me, and the reason that I call this an upset is just because of all the yip happening that Jimbo Fisher has done. I mean, Jimbo Fisher has been yip, yip, and yip, and yip <laughs> all offseason long, and he has been very, very, he's been very, very quiet this season. Okay. And, you know, and so, I mean, I guess it, 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 to some people it doesn't matter how you win as long as you win. But, I mean, if you're squeaking by every single game, you could be twelve and oh, but they will they will change your name to the Texas A and M Squeakers. That is for sure, one hundred percent for sure. Um, yeah. Good Lord, have yeah. mercy! If this thing wasn't running so slow, I'd already have the thing queued up to be playing. The, there it is. There we go. What's Texas A and M doing, Debo? <laughs> squeaking by i you know i think if texas and then pulls this out they're gonna squeak but i don't think they're doing it so ladies and gentlemen that is my week four upset pick for this week's yeah, action I'm, I'm, you know what I, i'm i'm with you i'm i'm uh i'm uh on the kj uh you know the kj fan K, kjj jefferson fan um uh, sorry train he's been doing well man he's got you know he's got what does that say six six touchdowns 770 yards you know he's got uh, you know Sanders. You know he's he's got three touchdowns. So I'm I'm thinking that uh, I'm thinking it's going to be quite a larger victory for Arkansas than you know people give it. You know it's it's, it's uh you know A and M's picked by two, but I don't. I, it's going to be an outright win, and might be might be an outright outright win by ten, maybe you know ten points, maybe two scores. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. So in other action keeping this moving and other action actually you know what i'm going to do before we move on is before we move on to other action around the sec what we're going to do is we're going to take a very brief pause for the cause and we're going to show some love to all of the shows in the let's talk football family this is where you can find all of them all of them all of them take a look That is where you can find all of them. Let's talk football. Let's talk football. The round table. Let's talk football. Ladies take over fantasy football in the morning on Sundays. Washington football weekly us here, our friends to the north with North sports dynasty. I know that's not on the list, but we also have some friends to the north that also have up in Canada that also do some great football talk shows also. So make sure you check out each and every one of them and give them your love and support. And if you're here watching right now, why don't you drop us a comment? Let us know who, who's here. We see there's a couple people watching, but just say, hey, and let us know what's going on. What's up? Give us a like, give us a share, give us a subscribe if you haven't done so already. Already, And then those of you that are uh, casually catching this later on on the replay on YouTube, hey, what's up? 
don't just stop here with this video. Check out some of the other ones as well. Moving on to what's going on in action around the rest of the conference. Number 16, Ole Miss welcomes Tulsa. That is a uh, looks like a 4 p.m. I'm sorry, I have to calculate the times because they have it here on Central Time. 4 p.m. <laughs> kickoff on the SEC yeah. network. Uh, Ole Miss should handle business handily. Um, Tulsa is a decent. Uh, Tulsa is a decent squad. Actually, I want to take that back. I'm going to reel that back just a little bit. I think Tulsa might make this interesting, if only for a little bit. Tulsa's not a bad squad. Tulsa uh, is one of those troublesome squads. There's a couple of uh, they're two and one, and they're one of those troublesome squads that will uh, kind of get in your face and make things a little difficult for you. But the odds makers say a little different. Uh, Ole Miss is a 21 point favorite. So we'll see what yeah. comes out of that. What you got, got real quick on that? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I actually I was going to say the same thing you did. I mean, like I was just looking at the. Obviously, this is a different, uh, different um, conference, or you know, for Tulsa. But I mean, uh, Brent has got eleven touchdowns and twelve hundred six yards already. Is that is that a that's not a typo? <laughs> that's insane. That is not a typo, my friend. Doing work, so, is, I, I believe. I believe the phrase is called putting in work. Definitely. And then you got Anderson, which is, uh, you know, he's, he's a the running back. He's got 130 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, that's a little bit more believable. And then you got your, uh, you know, you got Stokes, which is their uh, number one, <coughs> excuse me, number one receiver with 28 receptions at 457 yards and three touchdowns. So, I mean, those are, those are awesome stats, but I mean, like I said, I understand that they're not, they're not playing Ole Miss or not in the SEC. Uh, so, I'm like you, dude. It might, it might be first half, maybe first quarter, maybe maybe first half. Even it might be might be interesting. But I mean, then again, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Ole Miss. I mean, hopefully they'll, they'll take care of business. But yeah, we'll they see. have been. They they have one thing they have been able to do is they've been able to to make up uh, to make up quite efficiently for the loss of Matt Corral. You know, now yeah. they had now they're able to establish a, a running game that they've got going on now. Uh, as you know, as opposed to. Matt Corral runs for 150 yards and passes for 600. Right. You know, accum accumulates for accum accumulates 75 percent of the yards on the team. So again, that yeah. kickoff, ladies and gentlemen, is 4 p.m. on the SEC Network. Moving on to our next game, the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Uh, we remember the, from this them last week taking on Vanderbilt um, and Vanderbilt reigning triumphant. Over the Huskies, they they travel down to Lexington to take on the Wildcats of Kentucky, ranked number eight in the country at three and zero. Oh. Now the Huskies have not done very well for themselves this year with a one and two record. This one is going to be a blowout by the odds makers, uh, but they're only giving them twenty seven points as opposed to some of the other blowouts that uh, look like they're going to be scheduled. So I'm I I'm going along with that. Now here's an interesting stat, stat line wise. Offensively, the Huskies can score. Problem mm -hmm. with the Huskies is they got no defense. They are scoring 32.3 points a game, as our good friend Mr. Nicholas, I want the smoke, Rosario likes to say. Uh, we suck. We got a great offense, but we have no defense. And they're allowing 34 points. They're allowing more points than they're scoring. And the last time I checked, math yeah. <laughs> tells us that if somebody else gets more than what you got, then they got more than what you got. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be the tell if Kentucky mm -hmm. will if Kentucky exploits the weaknesses in their defense. Uh, I see this one being, you know, I see Kentucky scoring at least forty tomorrow in that game. We already talked about A and M and Arkansas. We're gonna move on to another game that I know that at least everyone in Nashville and in uh, Tuscaloosa will be watching. That is. The two, the three and one Vanderbilt Commodores. I still love saying that because <laughs> I know yeah. I'm happy for them. Travel to travel to Tuscaloosa to take <clears throat> on the Crimson Tide. They are being given less than a snowball's chance in hell in a microwave yep. wrapped in a tinfoil ball. 40.5 is the favorite for Bama. I tend to agree. I think Vanderbilt has been. Excellent this season in comparison to, to years past and with their first four games start. But uh, we're, we're talking about Bama, you know, uh, you say yeah. what you want to say. We're, we're talking about Bama and Colin. What is that that phrase you have that you always say about and your Bama does what Bama do? The truth of that. Exactly right. That is exactly 
There's a whole lot of truth in that. Bama's going to go and do what they do. They're playing at home in Bryant Denny. They're not going to lose to Vanderbilt. Although I will, I will be interested to see if Vanderbilt can at least put up 21 points. I think yeah. if Vanderbilt can at least score three touchdowns, they can consider this game a success. Oh right? yeah, seriously. I think so. Three too. and one, three and one start to the season, put up three touchdowns on Bama when they're just, uh, you know, I mean Bama's, av- I mean not Bama, Vandy's averaging forty two points a game. Now yeah. they have not played an opponent as formidable as Alabama, and Alabama's got a doggone good defense. They're only allowing eight point seven points a game. So we'll see how that turns out. Good luck to you, Commodores. We are all in your corner. May the odds forever be in your favor. Moving on. And that one's on the SEC Network with a 730 kick. Uh, moving on to the next game in the league here. We'll get into this one, and then we'll uh, we'll take a brief pause for the cause. This next game, New Mexico, the, no, the Lobos of New Mexico, travel to Baton Rouge. Oh. To take on to take on them Tigers. Um, oddly enough, even though uh, the Lobos are actually two and one, that's pretty good. Twenty seven point yeah. three points a game. They're only allowing thirteen points a game. But you know, we're talking about the New Mexico Lobos <laughs> against yeah. the Tigers of LSU. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, if they go in there and they hit LSU in the mouth, what do you think are the realistic chances of at least keeping them at bay for most of the game? Oh, that, that's yeah. I mean. At, at, Keeping them at bay is one thing, and like, and you know, just keeping it at bay, is, you know. But uh, ultimately, LSU is going to pull away, in my opinion. I mean, they're either, they're going to pull away, and it's going to be for good. I mean, I don't know if New Mexico State or New Mexico uh, will have a, a chance on this. I, I, you know what? That thirty-one and a half uh, spread kind of, kind of a uh, little surprising. deceiving. You think a little deceiving? Yeah, but I would. I mean, I'm almost ready to take the under. I mean, like I, I would not. I would go under that. Yeah, the over the over the over under is forty five on this one. Yeah, I'm saying. Well, I'm saying the spread. Like, I I think. Uh, yeah, I don't think LSU is going to cover the spread. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. I I got to give Daniels his props. I think he's I think he's finally starting to find his stride. Um, it looks yeah. like he went back and refocused his efforts after that loss. Uh, so we'll see what they get out of that. So before we get into this last. Last game on the slate for the SEC this week. We're going to give a little shout out to one of our Let's Talk Football guys who's got a great venture going on that I that we think that you need to check out. We'll be right back after this. Pause for station identification. That's our guy, Sid Swinton. You can find him uh, hosting uh, Let's Talk Fantasy Football on Sundays. He also does Let's Talk Football in the mornings with his wife, Ash, during the offseason. Get at him at Squid Rips Cards. That is where you will find him. He's on uh, TikTok under that tag twice a week live with live pulls, the cards that he has in. Get at him today if you want to uh, bulk up your football car collection those of you that are just joining us you might be on the tail end of the show but thank you for stopping by anyway we do so appreciate it this week in sec football mr fingers kyle and p we just got done talking about new mexico traveling to lsu and last up on the docket we have the gamecocks of south carolina welcoming charlotte Mm -hmm. it is a 7 30 kick and it is on ESPNU. Oof, that tells you what they think. They put you on the. They put you on the U. That's normally for like the low level HBCU teams is what they normally do for that. I mean, Savannah State was on ESPNU last week. Well, I won't say low level because I, I love my Tigers, but that's yeah. you know that's normally the HBCU network right there. They got the Charlotte Forty ers playing the, the Gamecocks. On ESPNU. Now the Gamecocks are favored. They're one and two, but they're still favored by 91.6%. The over yeah. under is 66 and a half. And the Gamecocks are favored by 23 and a half points. Is this gonna be the game? Is is is, is this gonna be the game when the Spencer Rattler we heard so much about five years ago before he got to Oklahoma finally shows up? 
I mean, I sure hope so. I mean, like I said, I just looked at our over under 66 and a half. I was like, no, they really don't. They either, they, one or two things is going to happen. Either they think that, that South Carolina is going to just absolutely just mollywop these guys of that, that, Charlotte, uh, but or there's going to be no defense in this game. <laughs> so, anyway, that's a, that's a pretty high over under. Well, score. see, that's uh, a but, but but for South Carolina, that's a dangerous thing because their offensive line is not that great. Right. They they stack up. <laughs> They both stack up evenly in points scored per game. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you understand what I'm that. saying? And they don't have much of an offensive line, so this might be the day when the 49ers' defense shines because they, they're, they've they been pretty – they're also one in three. So this has been pretty – they're doing 45 points a game. Uh, I don't know. I think, they, I think they're giving South Carolina – well – the over under sixty six point five, maybe, yeah. I, I I that might be pretty close I think. But with the defensive defensive performance from from the Gamecocks so far, I wouldn't be surprised if Charlotte if Charlotte at least scores thirty points. Like that yeah. over under might be a combination of points. Charlotte might That's wind it. up hang, Charlotte might wind up hanging the high twenties on them, even if Carolina winds up pulling this off. Yeah, so I mean, like, well, look at what you just asked earlier. Like, it, will this be the the rattler that we've been expecting to see? You know, I mean, what if it isn't? I mean, like, what if he doesn't come into his own? You know, this game. I mean, what does that say? I mean, like, what is that for? Like, the morale standpoint for him or what? South Carolina. I mean, it's just, you know, yeah, because he was supposed to be he was supposed to be the guy to bring the program back, and yeah, and he came in from the transfer portal. So, do you, do you think that Beamer? Do you think Beamer gives him a sit? Oh, I don't know. I don't, well, I don't really know. I mean, who do they got to back him up? I mean, I have to do my work, do my homework on that. I mean, I really don't know if they got anybody that's, uh, I mean, he transferred there to play. So, I mean, I don't know at one point he has to do so bad as to get benched. I, I don't know what that would be. But, um, well, I mean, here's I, what, well, here's what I'm looking at. Forget the fact that the kid was highly touted. He was a big star coming in to Oklahoma. Forget yeah. the fact that he's, you know, he was their primary, uh, the primary quarterback coming from Oklahoma, transferring in. Forget all of that. Your job yeah. as a football coach is to put your best players on the field. And if Spencer oh, Rattler sure. is not your best player, then he yeah. might need to have a seat is what I'm talking about. Right. I mean, I agree with that. I mean, he's got five uh, picks. L- I mean. <laughs> yeah. L- yeah. Luke Dottie, that the, was their starter last year. That would be their second stringer. Okay. So yeah, Luke yeah. Dottie Jr. from Myrtle Beach. So he would be their second stringer behind Rattler. And he was at least he played with a little more fire, a little more fire and vinegar in his veins than Rattler did, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm just kinda I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Is he shell shocked? I mean, like he 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 said all that stuff about coming over and like the, he thought the SEC would be an easier fit for him. He's finding that not to be the case, <laughs> you know? It seems to be. Not the case that he thought it was going to be. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I hope he does well against these guys. Like I said, this is, this is uh, you know, Charlotte. So, I mean, he's he's supposed to do well against these types of teams. You know, hopefully this will clear the cobwebs out of his head or something, you know. Yeah, well, my, but you, you, you understand my point. They're one yeah. and two. Last week they got beaten so badly at home that the fans left the stadium before halftime. Well, yeah. Yeah, if they I mean, well, start, that was against us, so. <laughs> if they keep, if they keep, if Charlotte keeps the game close yeah. in front of that home crowd to just watch South Carolina get embarrassed last week, and the fans start leaving the stadium and they start booing, Beamer's gonna have to do something. Yeah, and well, did, did you did you see what he said the other day? Or I don't know if it was an article or was it on television. Oh, was you mean his ha- You mean the speech he gave to his happiness and sunshine and rainbows, and we got all these great exactly, great- exactly. Yeah. Said, I know nobody wants to hear this, but we are making progress. Nobody wants to hear that. You know that kind of. I'm like, well, I mean, I don't expect you really. Say I don't know. I, be- I beg to di- I beg to differ. This the 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 Gamecock squad I saw last year. Was a yeah. lot more competitive. They weren't always necessarily oh, yeah. in games, and yeah, they got beat the day they got beat. But I mean, they managed to battle their way through a lot of games. This team, yeah. no, no. I mean, the yeah. only, I mean, the, yeah, only the, the only the only game in the only game in the East, the only two games in the East that I if I and I don't have the schedule pulled up in front of me, but the only two games in the East they really just kind of got blown out was Georgia and Kentucky. But mm-hmm. they they played everybody else tight and close, 
it, I mean, you know, of course they weren't going to be able to beat Clemson, but what are you going to do about that? So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and, and if you remember, you know, that South Carolina was one of the teams, if if not the team that you and I were worried most about, you know, for Georgia. Yes. Last you know, this, was, this coming season, this coming season, yes, last season, not so much, but we were like, well, we wonder if they'll be improved. We see who they, they are who we thought they were. You want to crown them? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and crown them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but yeah, that's definitely not what I was uh, was looking uh, for or expecting to see out of South Carolina. But, hey, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we definitely see what happens. Now, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this week's week four recap on this week in SEC football. I didn't put the graphic up for the two-minute warning because we know what the two-minute warning is. That's when we give you a little something to send you on your way, a little something to thought to ponder, something to make you chuckle, a joke to tell around a water cooler, something – uh, something to leave you with, to leave you, to leave you with when we pump up the ball, from we pump up the ball, from we pump up the ball, you remix, give you a little something to think about when we uh sign off here. And don't you do that again. Don't I'm pointing at my mouth. Don't stop it. I can't, I can't talk today. Words are hard anyway little something to keep you thinking after we finish up this show. So, Colin, I'm going to hand the mic to you first and let you give your two-minute warning. Man, I don't know. I just want to share something. All right, so um, it's just a little something, something for, from my job perspective or whatever. You know, as, as people uh, <clears throat> may know, I work for a large uh, internet company, type telephone type company. But anyway, that was a guy that um, I'm part of this uh, Facebook group on, uh, obviously, Facebook. And it's a, like the real husbands of uh, Loudoun County or whatever. It's just a group of you know, people in there. And people always have questions about, you know, if you have a plumber, do you have an electrician? Do you have this, that, and the other? So people just go in there and say, you know, just try to help people out for their, you know, the, and just uh, kind of toss names around for, to help people out. And there was this guy that actually was at, from Alexandria, and he was having trouble with his internet or traveling. He was uh, he actually uh, moved into a new apartment complex, and he was having trouble getting, him, uh, getting his uh, bios lit up. And uh, so somebody had pointed me or tagged me in the guy's post or whatever. And, um, you know, he, he was able to, to get a uh, to basically get an order, uh, an order submitted. But something was going on and then it wouldn't go through correctly or whatever. And, then, and even though it didn't go through correctly, you know, it would take 30 days for him to get the Internet. Right. So to, to get the install, which is crazy. So anyway, he actually pointed us and or pointed me into a, 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 a a fault or a incorrect um, uh, situation with the ticketing system that, you know, there was a hundred people in that, that apartment complex. There's a, uh, there are 400 empty units there. So those people will be wanting FIO. So he actually put me on to an error in our uh, ticketing system that I was able to fix. And then there was another guy who was able to move his uh, install date to today. This was about two days ago. So I'm just saying, if you can help anybody out like that, you know, that that made me feel great. I was able to help him out, you know, and he actually put me on to an issue within the company that I was able to fix, you know, before somebody had to go through what he did, you know, to go through all that. But anyway, no, it's just I wanted to share that story, and it, it made me feel good. And, you know, the other guy actually got him, you know, installed before the 30-day, you know, what he was actually told. So, yeah, we helped him out, so it was good. You know, if you can help somebody out, you know, by all means, help it out. Yeah. Very nice, very nice to get the air on for that. That's the good air on right there. Yes, oh, man. My two-minute warning. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to get philosophical on you. I'm just going to tell you, look, it's the weekend. <laughs> for those of you that, that work Monday through Friday, it's the weekend. Put your feet up. Crack a little something cold or a little something warm if you like it. For those of you that are up uh, northeast of here that are getting the fall weather already, I want to say I'm jealous, but kind of not. Um <laughs> Because that gives me a couple more weeks to get my grass right for the fall and eventually for the winter. Um, crack a little something cold. Crack a little something warm. Put your feet up. A light a fire. Go for a walk. Watch some football. Just try and relax. Don't don't kill yourself this weekend trying to do all the stuff that you didn't do during the week. I mean, yeah, if you need some clean underwear, by all means, do some laundry. But other than that, <laughs> get just I'm, hey, I'm saying, you know, some some folks have enough clothes to go two weeks and not have to do laundry, you know. But not to turn just try. Out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I digress. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't with you right now, bro. What? 
Hey, all right, I'm sorry. Finish, finish, I just, finish I just, I'm just saying, <laughs> just just take some time and enjoy yourself. Go for a walk. You know, look at your kids. Spend some time with your kids and look at them and go, wow, he grew too. He's grown a mustache. Joffrey, it has been a year. Do something. Just do something and enjoy yourself this weekend. That's all I got. And I plan to try and enjoy as much football as possible. Maybe get out of the yard. I do have one thing that I do need to do that has to do with an errand, but it cannot be avoided. But other than that, enjoy your weekend and have a good time. And uh, Man, ladies I, and gentlemen, I just, want to add, just want to add to that is, is uh, I walked out this morning to get my uh, put my boy on the bus. And it was forty eight degrees, and I uh, I really just had to put one foot out the door and I had to turn right back around and put on something because I was not dressed appropriately to, for forty eight degree weather. But I'm hey, actually bro. happy to see happy to see that it's here. I'm happy to see uh, falls here because I am a fall guy, and I'm 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 happy that it's here, man. So, hey, look, I was gonna tell you, you don't live in Georgia no more. It don't stay hot till it don't stay hot till November. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We got four seasons. We got two down there, hot and damn hot. <laughs> yeah, I, I, look, man, I remember growing up like it wouldn't even get it wouldn't even start getting chilly till like two weeks before Thanksgiving. Maybe maybe somewhere between Halloween and Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, oh yeah, something like that. But anyway, cool. ladies and gentlemen, this is the truncated version of this week in SEC football with the with the recap. We appreciate you tuning in today. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to check us out. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the games tomorrow. On behalf of myself, Mr. Fingers from Zagniff Central, and the brother from another, the sexy mother hub at the ace base, in the place, in your face, Colin P from the DMV. On the SEC, chilling with the F-I-N-G-A-Z in OKC. That guy, he's dark, but he's me. We going to be <laughs> back on Monday. So enjoy the games. We'll catch you next time. And as always, go dogs. And go dogs.